This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Be sure to check out the Mad Canadian and carry over at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 this Thursday. This is the only time this week that you'll get the Mad Canadian, so be sure to hit them up again this Thursday at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 o'clock. Be sure to hit up his social medias, Facebook and Twitter, to find out more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading next week. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcats also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class, hand-roasted, micro-batch, fresh-roast-to-order, veteran-owned coffee company. All of their beans are fair trade certified. All of their beans are USDA organic. Um, did I say they're out of Perrysburg, which is near Toledo, Ohio? If not, I just said it again. Or if so, I just said it again. If not, I just said it. I got there. It's all good. Uh, they import all of their high quality coffee beans directly from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Some of their most popular coffees are available in K cup. Um, gift cards are available, free shipping over $50, and you can save money with a subscribe and save service. I will talk a little bit about some coffees, some individual coffees in the next ad break. So stay tuned for that. But for right now, you can go find all those coffees for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everybody? Kyle, Hopefully let's everybody's do having a good well, week here. Let's 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 do a Let's do a, a quick bonus. Ask Sloopcast in, in the secret part of the show just for the YouTube audience. Buckeye Esquire in our live chat, which is right down here. You can join the, the shenanigans uh, by going to uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, $3 tier is all you need. Which silver bullet is poised for the next hurt my feelings style hit? I, I think I'm going to go. Do, do I go Craig Young? I, I could, I could go Craig Young. I might go Craig Young. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Mitchell, maybe. What do you think, Kyle? You know what? I'll, I'll stick with the, I'll stick with, um, linebackers here and I'll, I'll go with Cody Simon Cody Simon I think that's another good one all right all right let, Jared let's go ahead and get the show started here Ronnie Hickman might be the right answer Buckeye Zach we've got barbecue back here you're all invited welcome to the Sloopcast. how are you doing today Kyle I'm doing pretty well over here Jared how are you doing Tonight, good friend. Oh, call me, call, you called me a good friend. That was that was a very sweet way to start the show, Kyle. I saw someone in the YouTube comments suggest that I hate you, um, which is hilarious because of how far from the truth it is. Kyle's my buddy. I don't hate Kyle. All right, Kyle, it's enough. That's enough of that stuff. Just, or it's enough of the friendly just, stuff. Just what? Just when I beat you in the uh, the picks, that's it. Which hasn't, uh, I mean, we're tied for the year so far. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I know that later. All right, Jared, it is time. This time, let's jump right into it here. Let's go ahead and get to know our enemy, the Maryland Terrapins. Kyle, what the hell's a Terrapin? Turtle. Okay. I I think I think tortoise might be the more correct answer. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it's just a tradition on the show that I ask you that. I think I think I ask you that every year, and I think I just had to keep the tradition going. Yep, Maryland Terrapins coming into this game four and one, one and one in the Big Ten, coming off a abysmal loss to Iowa. 
but they lost 51 to 14 at home. Yeah. Now, now Jared, is Maryland is Maryland as good as what their record makes out to be? Four and one. Well, answer that question. Let's look at their schedule here, Jared. They open things off with a with a home win over West Virginia. Okay. You get a you get a victory over a an average, maybe below average Big 12 team. Okay. All right, that's fine. You shut out Howard, did what they're supposed to do, but it's Howard. Sure. Three point three point victory over Illinois. And um win convincingly over Kent State. And then I mentioned just mentioned this, but a abysmal loss to Iowa, 51 to 14. So with all that, what do we make of this of this uh Maryland team? Uh, they're, I, I, as you've pointed out, they've, they've played one real team and they got, they got absolutely destroyed. Um, Tua had a baby Tua, uh, had an abysmal game, which he had had good games prior to that. Um, he had only thrown one interception through his first four games and then through five against Iowa. Um, Iowa scored 31 points in the second quarter alone. If that tells you anything and like 31 points is a lot for but, Iowa to score in a game. And, and they did it in a quarter um, here, on the back let, of a let lot let of tell, turnovers. Let me, let me tell let me, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about, about that. Uh, so I know the first quarter Maryland's winning seven to three. You're like, okay. Okay, let's see, let's see how Iowa responds. Uh, immediately in the second quarter, Iowa scores a touchdown, takes three seconds off of the second quarter. Okay. <laughs> and, then, um, t- and then an interception by, um, yeah, I believe it was an interception there by Maryland. And uh, Iowa scores a touchdown immediately. Another turnover, a touchdown, and before you know it, within five minutes in going into the second quarter, when it was 7-3 Maryland, it was 24-7, and then Iowa tacked on 10 more points before halftime, making it 34-7, to and by that time, it was all over. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it funny, thing been- how, funny thing how turnovers um, really, really change how, <laughs> how the game works. Yeah, it's absolutely devastating for for Maryland, who you know came into that game undefeated and 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 knew knew it you know to to some extent that maybe they weren't everything they were cracked up to be. Kyle's mentored Illinois and Kent and Howard and WVU and all that. Um, you know, they barely beat WVU. I mean, they beat WVU by by a score by six points. And WVU is just, they're not, they're not very good in a really weak big 12. They're a middle runner. Um, Kent is Kent and Howard is Howard and Illinois is Illinois. They've, what, what, what else can you say really other than they've faced one real team and got slaughtered? And of course it, it, they got slaughtered in a bit of a fluky way because of all of the turnovers. But but are those turnovers really flukes? Like who who is Baby Tua right now? You know what I mean? Who who is he? And is is he? I mean, let, let's let's look at the stat lines for Tua right now. Um, against West Virginia, quarterback rating of one seventy seven. Against Howard, 203. Against Illinois, 150. Against Kent, 173. These are all really nice scores. And then against Iowa, 88. And then you were talked about the interceptions. Look, completion percentages, WVU, 72%. Howard, 81%. Illinois, 74%. Kent, 75%. The all fantastic completion percentages. And then against Iowa, 55%. So the Going question is, is, is he only fair, too, decent? Like Iowa, to, Iowa, God, to be fair, like Iowa, Iowa's just, Iowa's uh, secondary is just, just phenomenal. I think they're one of the best 
currently right now in the country. Like they, it's something ridiculous where they're allowing, or no, they're taking more interceptions than they are allowing touchdowns this year, which is ridiculous. Although probably a bit inflated by getting five of them in one. It wasn't a fall five in one quarter, but still. Yeah, I, it's. I, when it comes to Maryland, the, the, the question really is, you know, Tonga Viola, is he a. Who is he? How good is he? Is, is he the guy the recruiting stars said he is? Is he the guy that Howard and WVU made him look like? Or is he the guy that threw five interceptions against Iowa? He didn't look great last year, but, I, you know, 2020 was 2020. It was a rough year for a lot of us. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Nomad, he can be both. And, and I think when it comes it, it, to me, it's just kind of a it's kind of an unknown. And what's what's nice is that based off of Ohio State's secondary play as of late. You don't look at that and say, well, he can rip apart bad secondaries, therefore we're screwed. So when it comes when it comes down to it. I think a big part of this game will simply be how well do our defensive backs cover? Mm -hmm. I don't know, Kyle, do do you see, do you see any firepower outside of the quarterback position for, for Maryland? Um, I, I, you know, uh, Dante Demas jr. Is out. Uh, He's out for the season. Yeah, that, that was, that was their big one here that, um, that was going to point out here is, um, um, that was his favorite target to, to throw it to. He leaves the teams and catches by far yardage. Uh, so I think it's the next guy up there and that's uh, Rakeem Jarrett. Yeah. Who has the most touchdowns for the team at four, um, second in the team in receptions, second in the team in, uh, in yardage as well. So I think it's gotta be Rakeem Jarrett. And this is, uh, Josh, um, excuse me, uh, Josh and Jones is, time to step up as well. And he's third, third on the team as well. And yardage too. Uh, another target here. And I think this is, I think this is going to be a big, you got to keep your eyes out for uh, the, <laughs> uh, the tight end here. You want to stretch um, before, before attempting this name, Kyle. Uh, take, let me, take a stretch. Let me crack my neck here a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chico Zim. Okonkwu. There you go. Check his in All right. Yeah. Uh, All right. Got it. He's probably more of a red zone threat, more of a short yardage. Yeah. B plus B plus. Um, I'll take it. Short yardage threat for, for Maryland, a goal line threat for Maryland of his 11 catches on the year. Uh, three of them have been for touchdowns. He's only getting about not, not about he's getting, you know, He's not his average. His average per per catch is fairly low, especially compared to the wide receivers. Um, It should be noted that of the three wide receivers. If you add together Rakeem Jarrett and Jason Jones's yardage, it does not equal what Dante Demas was getting yardage wise. Hmm. Um, And then I think you and I'm not going to try and do the math on this. I think you put a uh yardage in there as well. Uh, I don't have targets. I don't, I don't have that stat available to me at the moment. Uh, you throw that stat in there as well. And I, I still don't think it equals the yardage that was being produced by Demas. Now, you know, how much of that is availability or time on the field and could you see the other guys, you know, step up and fill into that role. Maybe. But I think this is, this is a big game for Denzel Burke and, and Craig Young and, and seven mm-hmm. banks. I, I don't know if Cam Brown's going to be available for this game. Uh, he is dealing with a new injury. So not, not sure on his status at this point, but you know, we we've seen the maturation process of of Denzel Burke this year, and you know, I'm I'm sure you see him 
matchup, I would assume, on Rakeem Garrett, um, potentially, or, or maybe they're just playing sides. But yeah, it's, I don't know, Kyle, any, anyone else on the, anyone else on the team you're worried about from a offensive standpoint? Um, not, not, I can really think of here uh, that the rushing attack against Iowa was pretty much, it, w- it wasn't all that great. They, they had under hundred rushing yards. I mean, they averaged over five yards a carry, but, but by the, by the third quarter or even halfway through the second quarter, Maryland had to just start passing all over the play, all over the field there. I guess keep an eye on um, Tan, Tan Fleet Davis, who's their, who's their main running back, but they do like to get other running backs involved too. Uh, Colby McDonald, Isaiah Jacobs um, had gotten the ball um, a number of times against the Iowa game too. So I don't know. I, after seeing the rushing attack against the Iowa defense, I'm not too worried about it. But if you do look at their first game, uh, Fleet Davis did have a really good game, averaging almost seven yards a carry for a buck 23 in that game. But I'm just, I'm not too worried about their rushing attack. I, I think if you're Ohio State in this game, you, you got to keep, you got to keep baby to a, um, contained here since he, he is a little happy feet and likes to get out of the pocket. So I, th- I think that's going to be one of the key things that Ohio State's defense needs to do. And I don't think we're going to see a lot of big sacks in this game because of the mobile quarterback. Uh, to answer your question, Buckeye Esquire. Yeah, I think you probably see some spy work here. Um, I would assume my, my assumption would be that you, mo- mostly Simon, not, not so much Mitchell. I would say Simon uh, and or Hickman would be my presumption on that. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely assume it would be Hickman. Get, get somebody who has um, a little bit of a speed, be able to 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 catch him there. So I I think if if and when Ohio State does play, have a spy, it would it would be the the bullet position that would be Hickman. Uh, yeah, uh, both Buckeye Esquire and Nomad bring up Craig Young. Uh, Craig Young, who was playing a lot of bullet, uh, seems to have been bumped back to safety in order to provide a bit more depth there as as Ohio State's attempting to figure out the safety position still a little bit. So I think he's playing a little bit more of the what Ohio State refers to as the man safety, the the slot safety, whatever. I forget the exact terminology they use for that, but um like they, they tend to have their single high safety and then they tend to have what they call their cover safety. And I, he's no, it's, yep. it's not. Uh, they, they don't use the old strong free system. Um, but I guess if you did, I guess if you were referring it back to that, it would, you would say strong of the two, he's playing the strong safety. Um, no, Cam Martinez is, is uh, mostly still playing corner at this point. Um, I would expect him to just be in the rotation at corner. Yep. So speaking of defensive backs, if we go back to talking about Maryland here, uh, they, they have two, um, they have two uh, talented. um, I'm drawing a blank on, on the word talented and um, experienced pair of safeties. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Mosley and Nick cross. Um, back there on safeties, both of them, this says a lot too, both of them leading the team in tackles. So that, t- that tells you that, that maybe CJ Stroud might have a good game here, seeing that I think when, when I was doing my um, research here, three, the top three players on this Maryland defense, this is their defensive backs here. Um, if you're looking for somebody else up front here, uh, look no farther than their main defensive end, and I'm going to struggle on his uh, his name here, Jared. Okay. Uh, number n- number 97, Sam. Um, Sam, come on, you you got to try. Okay, Inon Inonu Inuno No New. Um. Yeah. 
Nomad asks, is microwaving nachos ever acceptable? No. No, that was about as ex- acceptable as. So, so Sam, Sam has, um, Sam is leading the team with six and a half tackles, five sacks for the, for the team. Uh, I do know that this, this Maryland team does play like a three, 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 four type of defense. Um, and so with them playing like a three, 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 four defense, him still getting five sacks does say a lot about him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm better than that nomad. I know. Is he? <laughs> Maybe. We don't pronounce things correctly on the show. It's it's what we do, or or maybe what we what we, we don't. don't do. <laughs> um, other than that, Jared, after like researching with their from their teams here, I just don't really see anybody who really really stands out a lot. Uh, Nick Cross, who is. Um, Who's uh, their 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 safety here? Has two interceptions for for the team. They do have a true freshman who's uh, starting the one of the um, outside linebacker positions there too. Um, keep an eye on him. Uh, um, Brandon Jennings, I believe, is his name too. But I, I'm not really too worried about from. I'm not really too worried seeing about this defense here. I think if if Ohio State's able to execute properly on offense they're, they're going yeah. to be able to score i i agree i i wholeheartedly agree by the way kyle we're, we're we're going a little over schedule we need to get to our ad read then we'll come back we'll make some predictions uh but before we do that before we do that okuwano okuwano okay. the correct answer was okay. okuwano since, since you were able to pronounce his name i'll let you go first jared all right, let's 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 take a moment and let's hear uh, from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who is the Iron Bean Coffee Company? Well, um, Kyle has been doing a cool thing lately with the Mad Canadian ad reads, uh, doing some uh, listener reviews, and I was informed uh, we have from Nomad in our Discord. He tried uh, the uh, the peanut butter. The peanut butter and chocolate, uh, he says, so the Buckeye is spot on, not overpowering like some, I'll say it, shit PSLs out there, uh, liquid pumpkin pie and a coffee cup. Yeah. Uh, PSL being pumpkin spice latte for anyone playing along. Uh, you taste the coffee, which is always good. And the chocolate and the peanut butter. So yeah, the, that was my one of my fears with it. So that's that's Nomad's take on the uh, peanut butter, the new peanut butter and chocolate flavor over at ironbeancoffee.com. Um, a bunch of new flavors. Um, if you're into flavored coffees, um, they added a bunch of new a bunch of new ones. Uh, we just talked about the uh, peanut butter and chocolate. Nomad sent a picture. He also got some cinnamon roll. If he gets us, we, we might we might talk about that one next week if he wants to get us a uh, a read on that. There's also a butter pecan, a banana foster, a salted caramel mocha, a vanilla hazelnut. Uh, those are the new flavors over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I mentioned at the top of the show that Mad Canadian will be in the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday, four to seven. Let me let me read you one more uh, review that the Mad Canadian has over at his Facebook page. Here, uh, got someone here that said, "Hey, we we picked up some brisket and pulled pork meals for lunch. All of us truly enjoyed both of them. Ordered both kinds of sauce on the side." So we could try their homemade Kerry floodwater sauce. And after one taste, we didn't even open the sweet baby Ray's containers. Their sauce is fantastic. A couple of, couple of us who dislike baked beans even had to admit that those beans were outstanding. We will be repeat customers for sure. And we'll absolutely recommend their food to our friends and family. Yum! Exclamation exclamation Ooh, two two at two yes oh my goodness um what more do you need go go check out the med canadian and his food truck uh 
If you can't make it out this week, check out his social media or us next week. Find out where him and his food truck will be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, it's time to make our predictions. Mm -hmm. Who do you have for your Ohio State player to watch? I have. I think this is going to be his breakout game here. I I think it seems like almost every game we have a different breakout person. So I'm going to choose somebody different here. I'm going to go with number 44, JT Tui Malau. I think JT is going to have, he's starting to really come along here, starting to get a lot of more pressure here. I I think he's just going to have a good game. It may not show up in the stats, but I think he's going to be very disruptive here and getting a lot of pressure on baby Tua. So I'm going to go with number 44, JT Tui Malau. Yeah, uh, I think we've been all, we've seen an incredible improvement from the defensive tackles from, from like week one and week two to now. Uh, I think we're still sort of waiting for that breakout game from some of the defensive ends. So, yeah, that's that's a good pick. Uh, I, however, will be going with Denzel Burke. He's already done broke out. But I, I think if you're trying to slow down the Maryland offense, you have to slow down the passing game. And right now, in my mind, whether it be true on the depth chart or not, he's CB1. And it starts with CB1 when you're trying to stop the pass. Um, we, we could see Cam Martinez continue to establish himself here. Maybe seven banks steps up and becomes the guy who we were sort of relying on him to be before he got hurt. And before he missed several games at the beginning of the year, um, or why ever it was, he was missing several games at the beginning of the year. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Denzel Burke because to me, he's CB one right now. All right, cool. Enemy player to watch. I got their their now number one wide receiver, Rakeem Jarrett. I think if Maryland's going to have any success, it's got to one of the wide receivers has to has to pick up here, and I think it I think it's going to have to be Rakeem Jarrett in this in this case here. So I'll have Rakeem, but Jarrett's answer is the correct one. Uh, baby, too. I've 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 already spent. Minutes explaining why that is. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Key matchup here. Again, uh, Jared's Jared's answer is correct here, but my key ma- matchup here. Again, I I feel like that this is probably a cheap way out, Jared. Isn't it always? But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm I'm gonna go with um, consistency with uh, C J Stroud. See, seeing him, seeing him being able to. Uh, so is that Stroud <laughs> versus himself? Sure. Okay. Yeah, Stroud versus himself. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, being able to be efficient like he was against the, the Rutgers game, making good decisions, tucking the ball when he needs to, getting a few yards. So, yeah, I'll go with CJ versus himself. Versus himself. All right. Uh, Kyle said I had the right answer and Kyle was right. I do have the right answer. It's Ohio State secondary versus the Maryland passing game as a whole, uh, which goes to like both of Kyle and I's answers for the players to watch, whether it be the quarterbacks or the wide receivers or the tight ends, just sort of lumping the passing game in together against Ohio State's entire secondary. All right. All right, cool. All right. The spread for this game as we locked them in earlier this week. Ohio State by 20 and a half. And who, do, who do we have for this week's guest picker, Jared? Uh, this week's guest picker, he goes by uh, Florida equals Buckeye in our in our discord. Um, he's an interesting fella. He's one of our newest sloop cats. We really enjoy having him around. Um, he. Uh, Listen, he he might be connected. That's all I'm saying. He might be a little bit connected. That's all I'm saying. He might have some inside info. That's all I'm saying. But uh, yeah, he's guest picking this week. Uh, He is picking Ohio State to win and cover with that minus two and a half points. And uh, uh, Kyle, I 
did I say two and a half? 20 and a half points. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. It's it's Ohio State to win. I think they cover, and I don't think I don't I don't think it's even a difficult cover. I think I think they slam this cover. Yeah, I I think they win too. Uh, maybe not as big of a slam as you have, but a a convincingly a convincingly win. I, I do have Ohio State to um to beat the spread here at twenty and a half. I have the I have the final score here of Ohio State forty nine. Maryland 21 being that Maryland gets a cheap um, touchdown at the end when honestly it was up 49 to 14. Uh, I mean, Kyle, our, our scores are, are pretty close. They're like, Oh, mm-hmm. maybe not as much as me. Are, what, what is there like seven points of difference between our two scores? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have Ohio state winning 52 to 17. That's, that's, that's about right for me. It's going to be in that general area. I feel pretty confident in saying so. Um, right, in, uh, by the way, Florida equals Buck says uh, he says it'll be similar to last week. That's that's his entire. That's I. We know we always invite people to to give rationale for their picks. Um, short, sweet, to the point. He simply says it'll be a similar game to last week. Kyle. Um, any additional thoughts on this game, whether it be from the Maryland side, from the Ohio State side, uh, before we get into the Ask Sloopcast questions? No, I, I think this week, a lot of Buckeye fans, and I'll, I'll reiterate it too, I think a lot of Buckeye, Buckeye fans want to see consistency this week. Are we going to see the same team that we saw last week that just completely dominated Rutgers, who gave Michigan a run for their money uh, the previous week, or maybe it was two weeks before that, are we going to see Ohio State dominate them the way Iowa did the previous week too? Yeah. I, th- I think that's probably the biggest question here. And I, I'm go- I would say yes. I'm go- I would say yes with CJ Stroud getting that rest, getting his, presumably his shoulder um, yeah. healed here, maybe, maybe dealing with, um, the battle between himself too, with all of the um, just the anxiety and the pressure being QB one too. I think getting that week off really helped him out. So I I, th- I think um, CJ Stroud will have a a great game here as well. I I agree. I I think I, I think sometimes you just have to wait for like the the pop to top off the the top to pop off the champagne bottle. And then after that, it's all good. And and I kind of think that's what we had last week with uh, CJ Stroud. Kyle, let's do some ass sloop cast. Let's start with Austin's over unders. It was yes. not Buckeye Zach. Yes. All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> Austin formation here. Here there, are man. his. Here are his questions. Here, Maryland fourth fourth down attempts at three and a half. I'm going to say under because it's going to be out of hand before they need to start doing um, fourth, fourth down attempts at that point. They're like, it's not worth it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think Ohio state, I think, I think this game plays out a lot, a lot like the Rutgers game last week. I think Ohio state ends up, I think Ohio state makes this not a game fairly, fairly quickly. Yep. All right. Ohio players with a pass attempt in this game at two and a half. Does he mean Ohio State players? I'm pretty sure he. Let's let's just assume he means Ohio State players. Yeah, uh, or or more maybe he means players from the state of Ohio. Who would that be? None of Ohio State's quarterbacks are from the state of Ohio. Stroud's from California. Go. McCord's from Philadelphia. <laughs> um, Miller is from Arizona. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and just assume Ohio State players with it. Two is from no, Hawaii. Right. I don't know. I'll, I'll go with under because I'm going to assume that he means players from the state of Ohio here. Yeah, we might see some accord snaps in this. Um, if we see any Miller snaps, he'll probably just be handing the ball off. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maryland pass completion percentage at sixty-two and a half. See I'm now that that's for- a great question. 
I'll go with over. I think I think he'll get some easy passes, some um, some dink and dump type of passes to make his percentage up. So I, I, I'll say above. I'll say above. Yeah, I think they're going to be afraid of the pass rush. I think they're going to try and give, uh, like like Kyle said, some dinks and some dunks and 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 try and yeah. I, I I think this is a great question. I think what might have be a more important question is like, where's Tonga Viola Viola Viola? Oh my goodness, where where's like his yards per attempt? I, I think mm-hmm. might be the better gauge here. Yep. Uh, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson touchdowns at one and a half over. Uh, yeah. Over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take the over on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Travion Henderson carries at 19 and a half under. I'll go under. I'm going to go under keep that, because keep, they're, keep they're, the not gonna, they're not going to rely. Yeah. They're not going to need Travion that much. Get, get the carries to um, other, other players as well. So under the year of the tight end year of the tight end catches at five and a half. Man, last week, last week was fun getting to see some tight ends and some tight end slash fullback catches and touchdowns in there. I, I don't think we're going to see as many catches. Five is getting over over five would be awesome to see, but knowing Ohio State, I'm going to go under. <sighs> so was it was it an anomaly? Was last week an anomaly, or is it finally the year of the tight end? Anytime we get our hopes up, Jared. Yeah. Yeah. I go under. I'm going to go under too, but it makes me sad. Yeah. Well, how is the interceptions off of Maryland quarterbacks specifically, or um, mainly a baby to a specifically actually over under at one and a half. So how is it getting more than one interception off of baby to a. I'm going to say over i think i think two's the right number i don't it's not going to be five i you know i don't think it's gonna be five but i think i think two's the good i think two's the good number here you know i'll go over i uh, uh, my 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 head says under but my heart says over i'm gonna go over this time okay i'm gonna go over <laughs> it is right, not let's, let's nomad see. <laughs> all right um let's 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 answer um some more questions here uh buckeye esquire asks a, a handful of questions here will more young stars emerge um or emerge slash have bigger roles on defense maybe cam martinez and or craig young perhaps um I, cam martinez i think is getting more and more snaps he had a he had a real rough week one and week two he kind of disappeared for a little bit. Then he's been coming back lately and, and doing doing really nice. Um, and yeah, I think we will continue to see more Craig Young as well. Um, like I said, they're they're trying, they're 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 trying to figure out the they're trying to figure out the the safety position right now. I mm-hmm. it's they have a lot of guys back there. I just don't feel like they have the rotation figured out, and he's a part of that. So. All right. Um, another question here. Is it time for day to truly embrace the tight ends as real receiving weapons or are the wide receivers just so studly that we cannot veer too far away from those concepts? Like there, there's only thro- so many balls. Like there, there's only throw many. So, so many passing attempts. Um, it just, it's, 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 it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It is. Yeah. It is. And a lot of that comes from what the defense gives you too. If they're going to guard, they're going to double covered um, Olave and put a spy on, um, on um, Wilson too. Leaves it open for a tight end as well, or, or JSN as well. It's so many weapons on here. It's, it's, it's really tough. Uh, let's see. Could we see more plays with a tight end set in the backfield as a fullback to create some more unique red zone plays for Penn State and Teton prepare for? Yeah, sure. I mean, that's what yeah, we give, saw. Give, give them give them something to think about. Yeah, I yeah. mean that's that's what we saw with the Rossi touchdown last week. Yep. All right. Uh, will Maryland 
take us to the brink in an almost let down game or will we dev- devastatingly beat the shell off the turtle? Uh, I think we've I think we've answered that with yeah everything. Else Burke gets two interceptions this week, and one of them will be a second pick will be a second career pick six. See, I feel like that's just a statement that you put a question mark at the end of. <laughs> and, and and I'm not, so how, I'm not, I'm not, so Ohio uh, State, that's, that's a big, that's Ohio, a big State de- Ohio State's defense has had um, three defensive touchdowns in the past three games and four, uh, yeah, four this year. So four of their last five, they've had uh, defensive touchdowns, which is crazy to think about. I never didn't really think about that, but yes, it is four. Haskell, yep. um, Burke, Martinez. Yep. Um, it was it so, guys? Who was the fourth one? Was it? I, I was it. I, I want it. Was it what? It, uh, was it Hickman? It was Hickman. Okay, Chad is saying Hickman. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it was. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, one last question here. Which silver? Oh, we already answered that one. Never mind. All right. That's all the questions we have here, Jared. Uh, I think I think this is a good stopping point here, Jared. So go ahead and take us out. Yeah. Uh, tonight's uh, just uh, visit visit. You want to join these goofballs down here making fun of us during the show? Um, nope. No, no, Mad. That's not what's happening. Uh, just trying to distract us and, and, and run the show off the rails. That's, that's, that's their, that's their job. But if you want to join them, uh, come in here and, uh, join the Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. You get, as far as digital stuff goes, you're going to get everything you want for $3 a month. It's next to nothing. If you sign up for an entire year up front, it, that you get a little bit of a discount on it's like 12% or something like that. But basically it ends up being like $32. For an entire year, um, you get premium access in the Discord, including like a recruiting channel, um, a live game day channel. Um, Once a week, we all get together and watch a football game together in the Discord. Um, You get to watch us record these live. Uh, So there's a lot of cool digital benefits, early access to episodes uh, that, that you get by by signing up. So I would encourage everyone to do that. And Kyle, I talked a long time, uh, so I think I'm done. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, quick update for those who are worried about Trevion Henderson. He's good. Urban Meyer talked on Tuesday that um, Henderson's good to go. Hmm? Who? Who did? Who talked? Day. Yeah, that's who. Which that's day? who talked. That's not what you said. Yep. Okay, Coach Day said that he is good to go. Whatever I said. Um, Listen, we're, apologize. We all have, do, we all have Urban realize. on the mind right now. We all, we all got Urban on the mind right now, Kyle. All right, yeah, there's, yeah. Sorry about that. Coach Day said that <laughs> Henderson's good to go. Apologize. And Urban uh, was Justin busy Fields. with his own team, plus some other shenanigans. Justin Fields, speaking of NFL, Justin Fields now. Name officially now the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Cool. Whether 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 uh, the Andy Dalton was um, healthy or not. Yeah. Justin Fields is now QB one. Yeah, and like my brother is a Bears fan, and he said to me, "Week four. That's what he said. He said week four or week five. Don't put him out there right away. The offensive line's garbage." Wait, wait till like week four or five. And so yep. I, I think had Dalton stayed healthy, this is exactly when it would have happened. And he probably maybe wouldn't even have been in yet, except maybe for last week. Uh, but is what it is. Um, I just hope that they can that they can keep him clean. The offensive line in Chicago is horrendous. So I just hope that they can mm-hmm. keep him clean. And that's that's it. I hope they can keep him clean and upright as much as possible. All right, Kyle, that's uh, that's it. That's it. He's nodding. Kyle's nodding. Yes. Uh, 
I can't I can't make the this isn't the visual medium joke anymore. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, tonight's ending music is by a Columbus based band. They'll be playing the Woodland Taverns this Friday night. Uh, they are called Mojo Flow. Uh, guys, if you've never if you've never heard Mojo Flow before, just listen. And like I know for you, YouTube folks, you actually have to like go down into the show notes and click a link. Oh, my God, is it worth it? Trust me on this. Go see Mojo Flow live. And if you can't do that, um, I mean, you got to see him live. You don't, you're not you're not living in Columbus the correct way if you've never seen Mojo Flow live before. That's all I'm saying. You're not doing it right. No, Buckeye Zach. Uh, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, everyone, this is Mojo Flow. Thank you.